Why, hello there, and welcome back to another episode of Shuffle Junkies. And I'm still on my uh, unlimited kick. Uh, you can always count on me whenever one of these Grand Prix goes into unlimited to obsess over unlimited for a while. And I want to revisit my favorite card from way back in the day, Rhino Roach. Everyone's favorite screeching nightmare. And we'll talk about the deck at length at the end of the video. For now, let's jump into some matches and see how the deck performs, and then we'll talk about why these cards are here. All right, let's start with some Shadowcraft here. So Rhino Roach has been a deck for a long time. It was super popular back when Rhino Roach was in rotation. And even after it left rotation, it's always kind of come back in waves, or, you know, I'd say it's always just been there. It never really went away, but there will be surges in its popularity. And I wanted to mess around with some of the new cards that we got and see how they play in Rhino Roach. And then I removed a lot of them because they weren't performing well. But one card that was performing very well is Korwa, the new uh, legendary for Forest, a fashion designer. I think it's a great addition to the deck. And you'll see why in one of the matches coming up. Uh, she's helpful in many of the matchups, but in one of them, you really get to see where she shines. But for now, we'll just kind of talk about the deck and the cards. In the very end, what you got here is another Control Forest deck. You are looking to collect all the combo pieces for your win condition, which is Rhino Roaches. Assemble them, and then just win in one turn. This isn't really a deck about pinging away and trying to eventually wear your opponent down, you almost always win in one very big burst. A huge, massive burst, in fact. Most of the cards in the deck are either here to sustain us and keep us alive, or are part of getting those combo pieces. Fortune Hunter Fina is one of those combo-enabling cards. Her evolve gets us a zero-cost Goblin Mage, which is super crucial to winning. Well, it's not super crucial. It could be super crucial to winning. And the reason why is the more zero-cost cards we have, the more damage we're gonna do when we finally decide to burst out and win the match. Goblin Hunt, uh, Goblin Mage, is our... It's our ro uh, Roach Tutor. That's the term I was looking for. And as you can see, her effect will put a random follower cost two play points or less from our deck into our hand. This deck only has one minion that has a two play point cost, and that is Rhino Roach. So every Goblin Mage we play will get us a Rhino Roach, up to three. Obviously, there's only three in the deck. After that, you're on your own. So that's real good. Flower of Fairies is another real good one. You might be thinking, you know, it's bursting too early. The only time I ever play my roaches when I'm not trying to win is when I can bounce them back into my hand like so. I did that for a little bit of damage and it was one of the more efficient ways for me to build up my ancient elf here and make a big ward. We're gonna go ahead and evolve her, do a trade. I don't want them to heal anymore, so I wanna get rid of that. And ideally, they're going to evolve another minion into us. Unfortunately, that didn't work out. I always want to bait out their last evolve before I Crystallia. But that's fine. Still in a very good position here. When your opponent is Shadow, Ector is a huge concern, so we always want to try and limit their board size. We want to heal when possible, we want to put up wards. And you may notice I didn't evolve her in trade, and that's because now they have a full board. They can't play Ector if they wanted to, unless they traded in one of their minions, which would keep me alive. And now they can just ping me for two, and that doesn't matter. Because we're pretty close to winning now. The one thing you gotta do with this deck is constantly do math in your head, thinking about how much damage you could do with each of your roaches. So we want to start generating more zero-cost minions here. Oh, actually, we're just going to win. I just did the math in my head. Good work, past me. And there it is. And that one last of all point we kept behind for the roaches is what allowed this to happen. See, I was thinking ahead. I forgot I was thinking ahead, but I was. 
Uh, exact lethal. Okay, some Havencraft. And we're going second, which I actually like with this deck. Going first, you do have the advantage that you could probably push out your lethal before your opponent can get their conditions met. But when I'm up against a slower class like uh, Haven here, I, I like going second. I like those extra evolves to control the board basically to my whims. If I'm going against another forest player, I would really like to go first because that will mean my roaches can go off and kill them before they can get their roaches off. Go ahead and get rid of that happy pig. Seeing happy pig makes me think that their next turn they're going to play Alana's Prayer. There it is, Alana's Prayer. So we are going to have a tough fight. Alana's Prayer is probably the next deck I'm going to look at because I'm having fun revisiting a lot of my old decks I had in Wilds and updating them. And Alana's Prayer has a lot of new support that you can have a lot of fun with. Alana's Prayer, if you don't know, whenever they heal their leader, they will buff all of their minions. But, oh boy, does that not matter to me. Gonna go ahead and play the Wisp so I can return it to my hand. And again, same deal with the Roach. If I'm going to play the Wisp, I either want to play it so I can bounce it back and keep it for later, or it's going to be on the turn I'm playing my Roaches. I guess they didn't have a play that turn. I am going to guess they're going for a value situation. They want to play a minion and heal at the same time. So we're going to get a nice four damage in here. And by four, I mean six, of course. Which feels good, but really isn't that impressive because their deck is built around healing. They're going to heal a lot of that back, unless I keep the pressure constant. Which I'm not too worried about because I'm basically already set to win here. We have a Fairy Wisp, we now have a zero cost Goblin Mage. I'm gonna play a card just so I don't mill the uh, the Fairy Wisp I'm about to get. I don't care about milling another card unless it's a Roach. So we're really looking to not mill a Roach here. As you can see, they're already back up to 18 thanks to Curate. Let me click on it. Alright. So I'm set to win next turn now. Gonna go ahead and throw that away just so I don't mill a roach, because milling a roach would mean I lose. Or not lose, it would make life much harder. And the longer this match goes on for, the harder it is for me to win. Ah, another fortune hunter. Doesn't matter though, we're just gonna go for the win here. As you can see, didn't have the roach, but playing the Goblin Mage pulls the roach in. So even if you don't have all the parts to your combo, you're usually able to get them in the act of comboing out for your win condition. So we have a 5, a 6, and a 7 attack roach here. We could evolve for an additional 2 damage, which we'll do here. Giving us... A brutal 767 attack. Exact lethal again. That's 20 damage on turn 8. So, what I like about 20 damage on turn 8 is most classes, their win condition happens on turn 9 or turn 10, or at least in the case of Dragon when they have 10 play points. So, we can outpace most of the win conditions that we need to worry about that are burst related and the ones that are not burst related the deck is such heavy control that we usually don't need to worry about it i made sure to keep woodland brambles because when our opponent is forest craft we need to worry about aggro forest which is going to have a lot of small minions this is going to take care of that problem it might be another roach deck which is another thing we'll need to worry about but we have a decent number of wards in the deck, and we can usually anticipate where they are in their combo based on how many goblin mages they've played, based on how many play points they have, whether or not they generated wisps. You can keep a rough tally in your head of the math they might be doing. So they were playing out expecting me not to have another Woodland Brambles, but I do have another Wood of Brambles. 
which means I can value trade right here just fine. I keep all my minions, they don't. So if this is aggro, we're preventing them from a big ol' buff and everything with, uh... Fairy Song, Fairy Harp, whatever the hell that thing's called, I always forget. Elf Song! Ha, huh, there it is. So that would've been way worse had I not cleared the board. Oh, Sylvan Justice. So, another situation where we can super clear. We're gonna go ahead and go face with everybody, and then Airbound Barrage these, letting us play Wood of Brambles again. So when you're up against a class that doesn't have early board clears or situational <laughs> ways to get rid of all these fairies, we can have a lot of fun and just push a lot of ping damage through with all these fairies. And we have so many more in hand. But of course, most of our- ooh, Korwa! It's gonna say we'll just get rid of our fairies, but Instead, we'll just get rid of one fairy, setting up Korwa for a trade that doesn't result in any health loss. And now... We have a very nice situation at hand. Every turn, we're going to get a fill. Which is a one play point spell. And those spells will give a minion an additional one point of defense. Why is this a good addition? Well, the reason why I think this is such a goddamn good addition is if you're trying to make a big roach, you need to play cards. Which is why we like those fairy wisps. When we play those, they get rid of themselves, they banish themselves, they don't clog up the board. If we want to play all three roaches, we can only use two board slots. Which usually means we play a zero cost goblin mage, zero cost goblin mage, as many wisps as we can, and then three roaches. With these... We could play them and not clog up the board. So we play a Wisp, we keep on buffing the Wisp, and then we play our Roaches. But another nice thing is if we've played four in the match, the fifth one and beyond will give every minion we play them on double attack. It won't double their attack value, it will let them attack twice. Which means, in my hand, I have a Roach and one Goblin Mage. I don't have any other tutors for Roach. I can't get more Roaches right now. If this keeps up, I'll be stuck at two Roaches, which makes it harder to win. But if I can give both those Roaches attack twice, then it doesn't matter anymore. It's like having four Roaches instead of two Roaches. We'll go ahead and get our second Roach now. I'm getting very excited for the possibility that we will be able to push through double attack roaches soon. We're gonna go ahead and take care of this board. The other nice thing is we have a permanent effect that if we take four damage in a turn, on our next turn we will draw two fills. We double up on them. So it actually sets us up for situations where if we can't clear the board that well when we take 4 damage, it's beneficial to us, it, it speeds us up. The other way is playing uh, fill on turn 8 will get us 3 fills in hand immediately. So there are ways to speed up the fill effect. Alright, we now know our opponent's playing Roach, but they made a grievous error in my opinion. They did not double up on their... Uh... Sorry, they didn't hold off on playing their Roaches until they were able to win. And that is going to cost them dearly. In that we can just obliterate them right now. Play both those fills. And as you can see, the fills let us win. We would have been short if it wasn't for having exactly two fills in hand. They're attacking us, let us win this turn. Otherwise, we would have had to Crystallia. Alright, another Havencraft from my last play session here with this deck. And this is my favorite game, actually, and you'll see why very soon. I did promise you would get to see double attack roaches with the fills effect, and here's where it's gonna happen. 
So our opening hand, I went and kept Ancient Elf. I want to have a nice big block. I kept Goblin Mage because having at least one of your combo pieces is a nice touch when you're uh, playing a combo deck. Goblin Mage might not actually be a combo piece, but it pulls a combo piece, which makes it better in a lot of ways. Instead of wasting a wasting a slot in your hand the entire game, which is what you do with Roach, you just hold on to it until you're ready to win. This lets us play a card and then pull into the Roach. So I much prefer never keeping a Roach. Like, I always send Roaches back because I want to get Goblin Mage instead. Alright, we're going to play Wooden Brambles and then both of our fairies. We're setting ourselves up for as good of an Ancient Elf next turn as possible. And this will be a pretty good one. Because even if they evolve to get rid of a fairy, I consider that a win. Ah, oh, they're gonna get rid of our with the brambles. Not worth it in my opinion. All right. So, <laughs> screw ancient elf. We have Korwa. We want to definitely get started on that now. So usually your turn five in this uh, deck. Fortune Hunter Fina is your number one play on turn five. You want to play it, you want to evolve it. If you have that in your hand, it's honestly worth it not even to think about it. You just do it. I would say Korra was our second best there. You play her, you start the fill effect. Oh, and a Fortune... <laughs> so lucky. We get a Fortune Hunter Fina on our next draw. So as I said, don't even think. Just axe. Play it. Immediately. And then we'll go ahead and get rid of their ward there. So we have uh, a lot of answers now. Oh, they waste their whole turn on the Seraphic Blade. I'm happy with that. Alright, we lose an Agent Elf. That's fine. It doesn't matter. We're gonna go ahead and set ourselves up for an Ancient Elf here. Like I said, only ever play the Roach so you can bounce it back. My order was not great, though. But honestly, this deck, as long as you are paying attention for the big lethal move, is pretty forgiving. Like, that was a dumb move for me, and it still worked out pretty well. Alright, we have options here. We could will the forest, or we could just keep on pumping up and get another Wisp. I'm gonna go for the Wisp here. So a board clear would be nice, but when we have such a big ward, we're begging them to waste and evolve, which is good for us. And instead, we can use that time to further our big combo moment. Getting that Fairy Wisp is very important. And if they don't kill this, we can bounce it back into our hand and play it again the very next turn. Alright, it looks like they are going to get rid of it. This is a pretty good one, though. Again, we baited out the Evolve, is what we were looking for. So, totally worth it still. There we go. If they play anything big and scary, we can Crystallia, which will give us another Evolve point. So, it's essentially a 6-8 with Rush, when you think of it that way. Or we could play it and merely store an Evolve point for our winning turn. Thank god they did four damage to us. That gives us a fourth and fifth fill. So we're gonna go ahead and get that evolve point. And we're not gonna even save it. Like, honestly, we can win very soon. Even if we only have one Roach in hand. Again, you're gonna see why I think Kor was such a good addition to the deck is you often find yourself losing when you're playing Rhino Roach when you can't get the number of Roaches you need to win. We've only ever been able to get the one, and we only have one Goblin Mage. But it's not gonna matter. We're gonna win right here. Play the Zero Cost Goblin Mage, get the second Roach, play a Wisp, bounce the Wisp back, play the Wisp again, we're already up to four cards. Our Roaches are going to be formidable. So we got a 5-1 Roach. 
We got a 6-1 Roach. And now... We have a 5-2 and a 6-2 Roach, both of which can attack twice. Oh, yes. So good! I love it. I love it so much. Well, there you have it. That is my Fashionable Roaches deck. So named because we have our Korra Ravishing Designer, her Fashion Designer, and our Roaches. Now let's talk about the cards in the deck. So, Nature's Guidance, you got to see this a couple of times. It returns an allied follower or an amulet to our hand, and then we draw a card. The reason why this is so powerful is you can play a Roach, bounce the Roach back, play the Roach again, which means you're going to have a Roach that attacks with, like, whatever we have, say, five. And then the next time we play it, it'll have seven. So very powerful. It's another way to avoid the problem of only having one or two Roaches and still being able to win. For each one of these Nature's Guidances we have, it's like having another Roach. As long as we have one additional play point for each Roach we want to play. So very powerful there. Fairy Circle is another one that's Seems like a terrible card, but it's actually very powerful here, because again, every card we play makes a roach bigger, and every card we play that does not take up room on the board is premium in this deck. A reason, of course, being that we don't have to worry about crowding our board and not having room for our roaches. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergies are brutal. Airbound Barrage, another bounce effect. This one has the benefit of being able to do damage with it, which means if they have a ward that has three or less health out there, this will get rid of it. We have lethal. So this could save your game. You definitely want to have airbound barrage. And it also works in amulets. Rhino Roach is the big star of the deck. For every card we played this turn, it gets plus one, plus zero until the end of the turn, and it has storm. As you saw, that means on turn six you could win, turn seven you can win, turn eight you can win. I say turn six because... I believe that's the fastest you can win is turn six. If you're able to Fortune Hunter Fina on five, before that you played a Flower of Fairies, and then the next turn you bounced it back and played it again, and then on the fourth turn you played it, bounced it, you generated a whole bunch of zero cost cards. Fortune Hunter Fina gets us a zero cost Goblin Mage, and then it's just Goblin Mage, Fairy, 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 Roach, Roach, Roach and you win on turn six. I find that I average turn seven as my win turn. If I have a good opening hand. You really need a good opening hand to do this on turn six and turn seven. But on turn eight, a mediocre hand is fine. And on turn nine, ten, you can almost do it with any hand, especially with this deck. And we'll get more into that as we move through the cards. Sylvan Justice is your easy removal for early game. They play a two health minion, you get rid of it. And it generates a fairy. And as you saw, fairies are our primary early game presence. Will and Brambles again generates fairies and allows you to buff those fairies for every trade. They do an additional one point of damage and that damage happens before the attack phase resolves. So if they attack into my one attack minion, they have a one health minion, their minion dies before damage is calculated between the two minions. So it allows for very favorable trades, and it generates two fairies. Flower Fairies, as we talked about, it draws us a card when we play it, and its last words makes a fairy wisp, and if you bounce it into your hand, it makes a fairy wisp as well. So you're able to play it, bounce it, play it, bounce it, and then let it click out, and you draw another one. So very powerful for card draw, very powerful for our combo, it's a very good card. And this was from... Uh, it doesn't tell you the set here. Here it is. Dawnbreak. It was from the last expansion, not the current one, the one before. So a great addition. Like, boy, this really made Rhino Roach much more consistent, and it was already pretty consistent. Goblin Mage, one of the unsung heroes of the deck. It will always draw you a Roach. And you'll find variations on Rhino Roach out there that have one drops and two drops that aren't roach and i think that's terrible because goblin mage will pull one of them but if it's not roach you you waste a turn in my opinion this is so much better if you ignore having one drops and two drops that are minions in your hand uh your deck just don't do it just keep rhino roach is your only two drop goblin mage will always keep you happy if you do that ancient elf is our 
big ward in the game. If we have a full board of fairies and they have a minion, we get rid of one fairy. We play this. It'll have plus four, plus four, giving us a six, seven. We can evolve it, turning it into an eight, nine. It's great. For three, even if you don't have any minions on the board, you just play it. If you get this later in the game, you play stuff. You attack with your roaches, you reap the benefits of whatever battle cry, uh, sorry, enter the field effects happen. Again, I play a lot of games. And then you play this, it bounces all back. It's a great card. Area Guiding Fairy. I only have one in the deck. I'm honestly considering putting a second in the deck because when you play this on four, it gets you a wisp. That's again, super important to winning the game. Those zero cost cards really make a difference, especially that they exile themselves. Such a powerful effect. And if we played on nine, we fill our hands with fairies, which I've never done and probably will never do, because that's not what we need for this. We need those those wisps. And at four, it's another bounce target, because we could play it and then use it to trigger off of our airbound barrage. So yeah, if you have two of these, consider putting a second one in there. Maybe I'll make a Korwa one-off, but Honestly, we'll talk about that in a second. Fortune on Athena, again, super important. You get a zero cost goblin mage, and that's another way to buff your good roaches. And of course, they will pull roaches. So if you get three Fortune on Athenas in your hands and no goblin mages and no roaches, turn five, turn six, turn seven, and then turn eight, you win. You just, they generate all your roaches for you. As long as you have I need your guidance to get rid of one of those on the board so you can play all three of your roaches. And now the new star of the deck is Korwa. So I often find that I can get all three of my roaches, but there are times where I only get two, and it's really hard to do 20 plus damage in a single turn with just two roaches. You need a lot of zero cost minions. Korwa lets us give those minions attack twice proper. Oh, excuse me, attack twice properties, which allows you to essentially double up on one roach. It's great. I think it's a fantastic way to add even more consistency to the deck. You would think drawing Korwa instead of something that we let a cycle would be more consistent. Get rid of her, put in more draw. I say no. I say it's tough to keep your hand low enough while you're holding all these combo pieces to begin with. You don't want more draw because then you're going to mill and you might mill a roach. And that's the worst thing you could do. So I think Korra was a great way to add consistency without having to worry about draw, without having to worry about clogging the board or your hand. And no one ever sees it coming. It's great. You always get wow reacts from your opponent when you have double attack uh, roaches coming at them. So great addition. If you have a Korra and you're looking to make a roach deck or just update your old roach deck, totally think about putting Korra in there. So good. Uh, Will of the Forest, I have two of them in here, and that's, again, just a board clear. You always have a huge hand, this takes full advantage of it. And then, of course, Cassiopeia is essentially Will of the Forest with a 3-3 body attached, which is good, because the problem with Will of the Forest is it'll clear the board, but it doesn't give you any tempo. You're not putting anything out there. It's pure value and nothing else. Cassiopeia's value with a little bit of tempo added in with that 3-3 body. It's pretty handy in a lot of ways. And last, but certainly not least, is Crystallia Aaron. So Crystallia is here in the event that you can't win on turn six and you need to heal. Playing her on six to seven gives you a ward and heals you. And then on eight, you can play her, get an evolution point back. If you need to trade to stay alive, she's a huge body, a six, eight at that point. Or you just hold on to the evolution point because if this is turn eight, you could win on turn nine. I mean, come on, it's, it's Rhino Roach. She just gives you that extra two damage for your roach so you could evolve it left or and then you win. It's great. A good addition to the deck. And that is Fashionable Roaches. That's what every card does. That's why it's here. I think I have a pretty good goddamn roach deck here. But of course, I would like to know what you think. Do you have additions that you think would be good for this? Should I get rid of something, replace it with something else? What's your roach deck look like? And is it just as good? Is it better? Let me know. Let's talk about these roaches. Anyway, I hope you had fun. I hope you give this deck a try. I think it's a lot of fun. The deck is in the description as always, so if you want to give it a try, 
check that link out in the description. You'll get the deck code. You can put it together. All right. And uh, again, I'll probably do... I'll probably do Alana Haven as the next deck, because I'm really having fun in Unlimited, and I'm really having fun updating my old decks with these new cards. There's a lot of fun synergies out here. Anyway, bye.